the basics of mobile home investing. How to close your first, second, or third deal by Andrew Sansbury and Shaniqua Reeves. I would like to begin by saying mobile home investing can be very lucrative. Unfortunately, most people will give up before their first deal. They say this business has a way of testing people to see if you're really built for it. In our journey, we found this statement to be extremely true. I want to share with you some basic ideas and concepts we discovered that every beginning mobile home investor must consider while mobile home investing. Finding parks. Finding mobile homes is easier than you think. Google Maps is all you need to find practically every mobile home community or park in your area. Once you type in Google Maps, type mobile home communities, mobile home parks, or manufactured homes. Try using all of these to search your area. Usually, they'll pop up about 25 at a time on a typical desktop or laptop screen. On a cell phone, most likely less, but all should still come up. Make it easy on yourself and just print the list out. Scratch off anything that's not a mobile home community or a park. You'll probably see all kind of things unrelated pop up in your search. Don't worry. Just scratch it off. At this point, we're only concerned with mobile home communities or parks. Try to build a list of at least 50 parks. Stay within the 100-mile radius. Some people do not like to stretch out, but depending on what state and city you live in, you may have to. Remember, the more you find, the more mobile home communities to potentially invest in. Once you get your list together, make a plan to call X amount per day. You want to have a pretty good understanding of what to say and when to say it if you do get a park manager or owner on the phone. Park managers run the day-to-day operations of a park. They know what's what and who's who when it comes to anything inside their park. Once you're on their good side, the sky's the limit. Park owners are even better. They really call the shots. It's easier to negotiate with mobile home park owners because they typically do not have to answer to anyone. You can make a deal with an owner on the spot, and they're they're usually very serious people. Park managers typically have to answer to someone, but make no mistake about it, as the saying goes, they hold all the deals. Anyway, make sure you're very polite either way, whether you deal with an owner or a manager. Calling parks. Before calling the first park, it might be helpful to do some role playing if possible. Get someone to act like they're a busy park manager. Act like you're calling and stumble through a conversation. You. Hello. Good morning. I'm John. I was calling to see if you guys had any mobile homes for sale. Receptionist. Good morning. Yes, we actually do. I have one for 62000 and one for 50000 Would you like to see them? You. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm looking for something used. Something I can fix up. You know, put a little money into. Then go from there. Remember, the park manager does not know your real intentions yet. So be prepared to answer when he or she asks if you're an investor. Don't be afraid to say yes. Many mobile home investors lie about being an investor, like it's such a terrible thing. The park managers are part to blame in this misunderstanding. Once they've dealt with a couple of bad apples, they tend to see the whole tree is rotten. Anyway, stand tall with pride and integrity. Say something like, yes, we take pride in bringing value to communities. We like to find homes that need repair and bring them up to park standards. We find qualified buyers and work with parks to fill the homes. At this point, the park manager will know exactly why you're there. Either they'll say, we don't allow that here, or they'll tell you the stipulations of the park regarding investors. This way you cut to the chase. In mobile home investing, you need to move fast. There are many ways to make money inside a park, but in the beginning, we recommend the quick flip strategy, buying and selling on payments or selling for cash. Your list is your best friend. After calling all the mobile home parks, create another list of investor-friendly parks only. These are the parks that said you can do whatever you want in their park regarding buying and selling. Write down the park manager's name and the receptionist's name. You want to begin building a relationship with them. The number one key to a good, healthy relationship is honesty. Start off on the right foot and be straightforward from the start. Don't make promises you can't keep. Don't act like you have a pocket full of money. Don't act like you're going to live in the homes. And don't be afraid to ask for clarity. Most park managers can smell foolishness from a mile away. Remember, they've dealt with many different investors in the past. So in the beginning, they may say, we don't have anything just to fill you out. Go back to the same park. In three weeks and call them in two weeks. Remember, out of sight, out of mind, so they will not automatically remember you. You have to stay on their radar as much as possible. We've been to parks in the past that has turned us away multiple times. Then all of a sudden, they'll have something available. 
I'm talking about investor friendly parks that initially had nothing available for sale every time you checked in. Anyway, keep calling and make note of who you spoke to and what time and day. Keep records on a spreadsheet. This will be the list, quote unquote. This list will have every piece of info you need about these parks. Park name, address and phone number, park manager name, the grade of the park, A, B, C, D, or F, estimate of how many homes are in the park, estimated empty lots, estimated vacancies or empty mobile homes. Believe it or not, this information can be very valuable down the road. Anyway, keep building the list, quote unquote. Of course, the only way to really build this list is by visiting the parks. Visiting the parks and driving for dollars. Firstly, when driving for dollars, always keep banner signs ready. 12 by 18 is what we always use. Have the signs ready to post. You should put the H stakes in the signs so they're ready to stick in the ground. Also, keep a utility staple gun nearby. Sometimes it's better to staple your banner signs to a wooden pole or wooden signs. If using H stakes, the dirt may be too hard for the stake to stick in the ground. Bypass this method and find a place to staple them to or just move on. Banner signs should be put out quickly and easy. Many municipalities do not allow or want these signs on the ground, so drop and roll as fast as possible and keep moving. Our second deal. We actually rode through 100 parks before we closed our second deal. The problem was we had no banner signs with us the entire time riding through all those parks. We did everything except put our banner signs near the parks. We wrote down the park's name, the manager name, how many empty lots they had available, the grade of the park, A, B, C, D, O, F, whether or not the park was friendly, and some other stuff I'm probably leaving off. We did all that and spoke to many of the park managers either in person or over the phone, but we forgot to put out them banner signs. That was the missing piece for us. Listen closely. I'm not telling you to ride through 100 parks. You should not have to do that before your first deal. Remember the first list I told you to print out from Google Maps? That list will help you cut out many parks that are not investor friendly. Putting out banner signs. Banner signs are probably the most important part of your business in the beginning. It's free advertisement. Most of your calls from people selling their homes will come from you putting out banner signs. You should order your signs as soon as possible. You can get them from various places, but we always use www.dirtcheapsigns.com. They're very nice and helpful. The prices are very reasonable and the signs come fast. In the meantime, while waiting for your banner signs to come in, go to Home Depot for a few. They sell them in a two or three pack. This way you can get started putting out signs immediately. So at this point, you're only focusing on investor friendly parks. Mobile home investing is really a rinse and repeat business. You have to keep pushing until that first deal comes through. Walkthroughs. Once you begin receiving calls, either from banner signs, word of mouth, or you saw a for sale sign in someone's window, you want to have a systematic walkthrough. What I mean is you're doing the same thing each and every time you walk through a home that's for sale. Check the floors for soft spots. Check the ceiling for leaks and mold spots. Check the faucets and toilet for plumbing issues. Check the outlets and switches for electrical issues. Check around the home also. Check the roof as far as you can see. Check windows for breaks. Push on the walls around the mobile home and look for weaknesses in them. Remember, everything is fixable, but we're not made of money. And this is our first deal or second or third deal. So don't overspend on repairs. Also, a very important point is never to insult the home at the walkthrough. This is someone's home we're talking about. The owners may have been raised there or raised their children there. The owners may have put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the home just to get it to that level. So beware of speaking bad about the home to the owners. It's really a turn off, even if what you say is true. Instead, talk about the potential of the home and how nice it is. People love flattery and sometimes would choose who to sell to. If your offer is the same as another negative individual, they will most likely choose you to sell to. After viewing the home, tell the seller you'll give them an offer in 24 to 48 hours. Making offers. After viewing the home, making offers can be scary. Don't be afraid to offer what you can afford to pay. Most sellers overprice their homes anyway. They understand that buyers are going to lowball them to death, so they almost always leave room for negotiations. Start your offers low. You can always raise your offer up if you really want the home. Tell them. They'll hear something back from you in a day or so. If you see other investors visiting the home, 
act as fast as possible. Remember, you can make an offer on the spot if you want to, but doing your due diligence is extremely important, so try not to rush anything. At this point, we're just making an offer, so 48 hours should be more than enough time to craft your offers. Consider all the repairs needed. Ask the seller what plans they have after selling the home. Gather as much information as possible. You want to find out if the seller has a pain point. Most sellers are in dire need of money, so most likely they'll have a pain point. Never give them a, a low number without preparing them first. Start by telling them how much you really want the home. You can say, I really love your home, and we definitely want it. There's just a few things I have to take in consideration. They'll say, like what? Then you say, well, you know we don't plan on living in the home, so we have to bring it up to market value. Say, I would love to give you your asking price, but and it may really be worth what you're asking for. I, I just got to leave room for profit somewhere. How low can you go? That's basically how a conversation would go between a typical seller and myself. Stay in compliant with the park. Many investors break park rules. Look. By no means am I an angel, but right is right and wrong is just wrong. Sometimes investors come to the park for the first time and tell the park manager how nasty the park is. Then they'll tell the park manager, yes, we, we, we will be living in the home, knowing jolly well that's not the case. Some people even move the home out of the park after signing the contract not to do so for X amount of time. Some sell the home on payments when told they can only sell, they can only resell for cash. No rent to own agreements allowed. Listen, I'm an investor. I know it's difficult dealing with parks sometimes, but rules are a rules. If the rules don't fit your investing style, move on to another park. Eventually, you'll find a perfect match. One to three parks is all you need to stay busy. Hopefully, your end goal is owning your own park anyway, so then you can make the rules. Until then, staying in compliance as much as possible is, is, is important. With that said, I would be lying if I didn't tell you it can be difficult trying to follow every single rule to the T. So at least try to follow the big ones, man. Try not to raise any red flags. Once you do a couple of deals in the park, things should get a lot smoother for you. Closing as a buyer. Once your offers are made, eventually someone is going to bite. You need to know how to close properly. Before anything else, you have to get approved by the park manager first. Put an application in as soon as the seller accepts your offer. Make sure the office is aware of the transaction. It usually takes two to three business days to get an answer for your application. Ask the park manager if the seller is up to date on his or her lot rent. You may be in for a surprise. If the seller owes lot rent, take it out of the cost of the home. It's the seller's responsibility to pay all previous lot rent on that home. You will have to pay everything moving forward. Make sure your paperwork is tight. Number one, a bill of sale. Number two, a buyer-seller's agreement. One-page contract. Make sure the seller has the title in hand. Make sure the title is clean and clear, free of any liens. You can call the local tag and taxes office to find out if the title is clean. Give them the VIN number on the title, and they will tell you the status of that title. Most sellers will have no problem giving you the VIN number upon request. In my experience, I personally prefer doing the entire transaction at the tag office. That way, you will know whether or not the title is transferable immediately. If the home has back taxes on it, they will not transfer that title into your name until the taxes are paid in full. Once all your paperwork is intact, do a final walkthrough. Make sure the home is cleaned out with no abandoned junk. It can be costly sometimes depending on how much stuff is left in the mobile home. Make sure the shed is empty too. Some people will try to pull a fast one on you and stuff old furniture in the shed. That may be a clean-out bill for you. And remember, we're being conservative as possible at this point. Any unexpected expenses comes out of the seller's money before he or she gets it. You'd be surprised how grimy people can be sometimes. Once the transaction is complete, inform the leasing office. If possible, try to avoid signing a 12-month lease agreement. The office may work something out with you because they understand you're not living in the home. If you have to sign a lease, just make sure they're okay with you breaking the lease once you sell the home. Try to have it sold within 90 days, fixing the home up. Remember the grade system we talked about earlier, A, B, C, D, and F homes? Hopefully the ones you purchase are A's, B's, or C's. Preferably all A's if you can. The best buys are homes that simply need a good cleaning. Go to the dollar store, pick up bleach, Ajax, pine saw, and vinegar. Also grab a mop and a broom, 
in a dustpan. You can have an A or B home ready in one day. C homes are a bit more work. You may have to patch holes in the wall and place some light switches, change the faucet, and paint a couple of rooms. Maybe a door needs to be patched or replaced, but nothing too major. I would advise staying away from D homes in the beginning. F homes are definitely a no-no. Trust me, it's not worth it. Try not to go too crazy on repairs. It's been known to be a rabbit hole at the end of the day. Mobile homes are fragile, and sometimes one repair leads to another. Just make sure the home is safe, clean, and livable. Listing the home for sale. There are many platforms you can use to relist the home for sale. Craigslist, LetGo, OfferUp, and Facebook Marketplace, to name a few. You can also use banner signs to advertise the home. Most people use Facebook. It's probably the easiest to, na to navigate and correspond with potential buyers. Once the home is up for sale, it's important to have a system in place to keep tire kickers away. Most people are not serious buyers at all. Some are investors like yourself and some intend to live in the home. While posting the home, give as much detail as possible in lots of pictures. The more photos and info in your ad, the less people will have to ask questions. Buy a lockbox from Home Depot. Put it on the front or back door if possible and don't forget the code. When serious buyers want to see the home, ask them to send you some form of ID before you send the code. It may be best to leave a small list of rules visible for anyone entering to follow. Nothing too major, but enough to guide them through the walkthrough. It may look something like this. Number one, please do not cause any damage while viewing the home. Number two, fill out an application and drop it at the office. Number three, replace the keys in a lockbox and lock the door when finished. Number four, call property owner if you have any issues. Thanks for viewing the home. Closing day, a.k.a. payday. This is when it all makes sense. Once you find a serious buyer, prepare to close. You will need a bill of sale and purchase sale agreement, the same as when you purchase the home for yourself. The purchase sale agreement is not a necessity, but utilized for, uh, for more clarity throughout the transaction. Remember, if you want to keep doing deals in that park, you want the first deal to go down as flawless as possible, at least to the best of your ability. Real buyers will try to get approved by the park as soon as possible. Fake buyers might avoid the office altogether. At least it seems that way for the most part. Anyway, once your buyer is approved, proceed with the transaction. As I stated before, we like to close at the tag office for various reasons. One is that I know for sure the buyer has removed the home out of my name. The taxes are likewise out of my name. We usually get all the paperwork notarized at the same time. You want to have a paper trail from East Bumbleville to Chicago. This way, if anything goes south, you have proof for everything. Once the deal is completed, ask the park manager if there's any more vacant homes in the park for sale. Let them know you are hungry and eager to do more deals in the park. Rinse and repeat. After dealing with the learning curve that comes with your first deal, the second deal is right around the corner. Focus on advertising. We buy mobile homes, along with your phone number written on a big bandit sign. Keep building the list, quote unquote, and keep calling those parks asking about mobile homes for sale. Never be afraid to speak with park managers or owners. They are only human like you and I. They have lives and families just like us. Bring them gifts and trinkets when visiting the office. Coffee and donuts usually work pretty well because the maintenance team and park residents will gobble them up. In a nutshell, you want the park to see you as a giver and not just a taker all the time. You give tremendous value. And don't you forget it. If you're in the business of mobile home investing for the long haul, it's important to preserve your name and credibility. Remember, park managers and owners communicate with one another in many cases, so your name can get around pretty quickly. Develop a system and be patient. Follow it as much as possible. Also, failure is not an option. Keep moving forward. Trust me, the fruits of your labor will pay off without a doubt.